the world is faced with unprecedented energy challenges. In the UK and across the world, for several decades, we have been hearing about renewable energy. In fact, we have been focusing on renewable electricity. Heating accounts for over 50% of our society's energy use. Now businesses are looking for renewable heating on a big scale. This is the story of big heat pumps and how they can deliver a truly sustainable future. My name is Graham Stewart, Group Managing Director of Star Refrigeration. Star Refrigeration has been in business for over 40 years, specialising in the cooling business but we see an opportunity and have seen an opportunity for the last three years in going into heat pumps. The big tenets of STARS business have been a focus on quality, reliability and durability. One of the key benefits to the customers is it helps them control their costs and know what their costs are going forward so it gives them a bit more security. The biggest challenge we face we knew would be that the market is dominated by global companies with fantastic expertise uh, what we wanted to do was use our thermodynamic expertise and pursue a niche of that market. And that itself threw up some particular challenges on the technical side. Whilst we had the expertise on the design, what we did find was that some of the supply chain, the components, uh, weren't really fit for purpose. Uh, our suppliers worked very closely with us and I'm pleased to say that after two years we've now got a much more robust product and future projects will see the benefit for that. We aim to, de to deliver a solution that is a low-cost solution and sustainable for the benefit of everybody in the future. So that may apply to an industrial concern or a public authority or even a, a housing community. The benefit that everybody will get is the one of low cost and sustainability and environmentally friendly. The good thing about heat pumps is uh, they just work. Apart from providing heating, cooling and hot water, they have a triple dividend in terms of environmental benefits. They uh, use renewable energy, they are energy efficient and they reduce the greenhouse gas emission of the whole system. Heat pumps aren't a new idea. We've been manufacturing systems similar to these for over 40 years. The technology itself was first talked about in 1852 by Lord Kelvin. So it's certainly not a new idea where, where we're seeing increased uh, interest in, in heat pumps now is that they are now the lowest cost form of heat that's possible in, in the UK. Now that we can reach these higher temperatures, the retrofit potential for sourcing heat and delivering that into buildings at the lowest cost of heat is quite incredible. From housing estates such as Cran Hill in the east end of Glasgow, where fuel poverty is a massive problem, to the west end of Glasgow and Glasgow University, fuel cost is a burning issue. Some of them don't even put their gas on already, it's just not because they can't afford it. It's really hard to live, it's hard to keep warm, and it's not even that. There's times I start with the electricity because I couldn't put it in. So not only are you frozen, but you can't even heat stuff up because the whole electricity is cut, yeah. and it's just a, it's too much money. We need something more inspired. The answer lies in harnessing local resources to heat our hospitals, homes and universities. Our country is crisscrossed with rivers that could provide a huge resource of heat for large heat pumps. Even a small river like the Kelvin with a flow rate of 3000 litres per second would be enough to provide all of the heat required by the university. Taking a river with a flow rate of 100,000 litres per second, such as the River Clyde, the heat capacity is massive. A flow rate of 1 litre per second flowing in a river 
if cooled by 2 degrees, would allow enough heat for three houses. A team from Glasgow University, Andrew Poonking, Adam McConkey and Dr Jibin Yu, assessed the potential of the River Kelvin as a heat source for the University. They concluded the river had over three times as much capacity as needed to heat the entire University. The larger rivers in Britain, for example the Clyde, the Forth, the Tay, the Tyne, the Trent, the Mersey, the Severn and the Thames, each have a heat harvesting potential of close to 1 million kilowatts each. Add in sources such as sewage treatment plants, data centres and even low grade waste heat from power stations and there is enough heat for millions of houses and businesses. Drammen, located 40 kilometres west of Oslo in Norway, has worked tirelessly to improve its environment. District heating first implemented 30 years ago was fossil fuel sourced. More recently, biomass has been added but rising costs and air pollution challenges led Drammen to seek another way of heating their city. Four years ago, the city of Drammen asked Star Refrigeration, can we harvest heat from our river? Star rose to the challenge, a challenge made more difficult by a desire to reach 90 degrees, but without using synthetic working fluids like HFCs. By February 2014, Dramen Fjernvarma had harvested 133 gigawatt hours of heat. 85% of their annual production from the new facility is from the star neat pumps. Gas is only used for additional capacity on the coldest days. Only 15% is from fossil fuels. The new facility is a worthy addition to a proud city. The key thing about Drammen is the physical size. Um, essentially at 14 megawatts, it, it's a very large heat pump system in the context of the UK or Europe. Um, and then you've got the actual performance of the heat pump. Delivering 90 degrees is exactly what you need for the UK for retrofit markets, um, but also with a COP uh, in excess of three at those temperatures, that's outstanding performance and it will give a very, very cost effective means of low carbon heating. Behind the scenes of a busy modern city, the heat pump works hard, harvesting local heat. Clean heat that doesn't need imported fuel, doesn't burn, won't ever run out. They have moved to a solution for heating that won't rise in cost. They know air quality is of paramount importance. A recent Public Health England report cites the burden on public health to be as much as 1 in 12 deaths in London related to air quality. Air pollutants are a factor in a staggering 29,000 deaths across the UK per year. Looking at the United Kingdom, the latest, the recently published renewable heat incentive shows that heat pumps are one of the lowest cost alternatives uh, towards providing heating and uh, hot water and thus probably will, uh, will be quite successful in the upcoming months and uh, even years. 
uh, quite an overlooked segment in the heat pump market are large heat pumps, heat pumps with a capacity uh, exceeding 100 kilowatts but possibly uh, but reaching even several megawatts. They are used in uh, larger buildings, in, uh, in estates, in cities and uh, the biggest of all, the biggest heat pumps that are in operation are used in district heating systems and that's where companies like Star come into play. They provide uh, with their new heat pumps a good solution for district heating systems um, at a temperature range of up to 90 degrees and they can also use uh, the existing um, heating infrastructure quite efficiently. The business has been working uh, around the question of energy efficient systems for 40 years unusually even in the days when uh, energy was cheap and people hadn't really caught on to the issues of CO2 emissions and global warming we were still very focused in, in trying to deliver to our customers energy efficient systems um, and that's continued through to, to this day and a really important factor associated with that is, is about delivering not just a box um, but actually looking at, at the systems that that box might be connected to and taking a much wider view of how uh, the various elements and pieces that come together actually impact on the overall energy efficiency. STARS in-house programming skills can bring together mechanical skills with software skills. This collusion results in a more efficient heat pump control. Three years after Lord Kelvin's lecture about heat pumps, Peter Ritter von Rittinger demonstrated the application of heat pumps in an Austrian salt mine. His legacy is marked by the International Energy Agency Heat Pump Programme, who present an award in his name every three years. This is awarded to the team with the most deserving achievement in the advancement of heat pumps. The 2014 Rittinger Award was presented to the team from STAR for their work in Dramen and other projects. District heating is increasingly talked about in the UK. What makes Dramen special is their vision of the future. They have moved forward from burning fuel, but not to a solution such as CHP that is still ultimately burning fuel. They are rightly proud of their achievements and have hosted several show and tell visits. So sustainable heating is important how do neat pumps stack up versus other techniques? A sustainable future must be a balance of social, economic and environmental factors. Being bearable, equitable or viable isn't enough. Solutions must be sustainable. Great local job prospects, both for heat pumps and networks. Support interruptible electrical supplies low cost of heat, seasonally flexible, predictable fuel cost, no fuel imports, no geopolitics. Lowest cost of heat, encourage economic growth, create jobs. Cooling opportunity, no drilling, can be zero carbon, no GWP fluids, no vehicle emissions, no local air emissions. There really is no time better than now for heat pumps to be adopted. Our future in heating is STAR. Renewable energy. STAR are active members of many industry groups, including Scottish Renewables, the UK District Energy Association, the European Heat Pump Association, the Institute of Refrigeration, and the International Institute of Refrigeration. This video was conceived at a networking group organised by SEED Scotland. SEED then facilitated the further meetings of the parties involved.